Hi, my name is Josh and welcome to an episode of Digital Growth. Today, I'll be talking about three common things I observe when auditing Google Ads accounts that impacts performance negatively. And trust me when I say that these are some of the easiest things that you can implement today that will improve the performance of your ad campaigns. Number one is not running middle and bottom of funnel search campaigns. What we typically see is singular search campaigns that target new users, previous website visitors, and previous purchases. But having everything under the one campaign leaves you no control over driving more performance from your middle and bottom of funnel audiences that are more likely to buy from you. And the way that we combat this at Farsight is having a campaign dedicated to top of funnel, being new users excluding website visitors and purchases. We'll have a middle of funnel campaign that's set up to target previous website visitors, excluding purchases. And in some cases, a bottom of funnel campaign, which is targeting previous purchases, which works really, really well for e-commerce businesses. And the reason we do this is that users that have already interacted with you before uh, are more likely to convert than those who haven't. It gives us additional control over things like budget distribution. So we really want to make sure that your middle and bottom of funnel campaigns have uncapped budgets. So you will always serve ads to these users. By having everything under the one campaign, you run the risk of the budget running out when a previous website visitor is doing another search. The second is ad messaging. You need to ask yourself, why didn't someone fill out a lead form or purchase from you on their first session on your website? They may have got distracted in their session. They may have an objection or a question that just didn't get answered on their first session. So by having a campaign set up specifically for middle and bottom of funnel, you now have an opportunity to leverage some alternative messaging like a risk remover, such as a 100% money back guarantee, or some social proof like 1,250 people love us, or perhaps lean into a promotion uh, just to get them over the line, like 10% off, which you might not put in front of someone at top of funnel. Number three is landing pages. So if you know that a user has already consumed your content, perhaps taking them back to the homepage or services page isn't the best option. You can now test different landing pages like sending users straight to the lead form or to a product page. You've got new keyword opportunities as well, so you can really expand your reach by targeting broader keywords in middle and bottom of funnel that you might not put in your top of funnel campaigns. Another strategy is also testing straight broad match keywords, which is a great mining strategy to find new keyword opportunities as well. And implementing a full funnel strategy is, is one of the easiest things that we can do to drive better performance and efficiency from your Google Ads marketing spend. Strategy number two is choosing the incorrect geo-targeting settings that often leads to wasted ad spend. I think of Google like a bit of a landmine in the sense there's just so many things that you can do to, to trip you up and waste your spend, and this is very much one of them. Underneath where you choose your target location, there is a setting called location settings. And ironically, the recommended and default setting by Google is what I'm recommending you avoid. That is presence or interest people in or regularly in or who've shown interest in your targeted location. And this is most likely the option that you want to avoid as the who've shown interest in your targeted location is where you're exposed. So as an example, if I'm in America and I'm searching about a holiday coming to Australia, then I've shown interest in your targeted location and therefore your ads might start appearing to me. And I've seen accounts that have spent $15,000 plus on countries outside of the target location simply because the advertiser didn't know about this setting. And you can just imagine the look on the business owner's face when I told them this. Number three is advertisers missing out on segmentation opportunities. This strategy is particularly powerful for advertisers with a limited budget looking to drive better efficiency from their account, being a lower CPA or higher ROAS. We frequently see accounts that only have one search campaign that's targeting all of their keywords or sometimes just a brand and non-brand campaign. But this doesn't give you any control to push more budget behind top performing segments. And a couple of examples of this might be that you analyze your device report and see that desktop has a CPA that is half of mobile, but mobile is chewing up 75% of the total budget. And yes, you could just implement a negative bid adjustment on mobile, but it doesn't give you the full control over distributing your budget. So by segmenting device type at the campaign level, you can now push more budget behind your desktop campaign, which will ultimately lead to improved performance. Another example is that you're running a shopping campaign and running all products under the one campaign. You analyze your product performance and realize that some of your highest ROAS products have a low impression share. And a really easy way to combat this is to simply create a new shopping campaign dedicated for high ROAS products with its own dedicated budget. Now that's three of many strategies that we look for when reviewing Google Ads accounts. If you have any questions on how to set up a proper funnel strategy or how to find a new segmentation opportunity, 
please hit me up and I'd be more than happy to help. But otherwise, thanks so much for listening and have a great day.